We've been gearing up for Aligned 17, which is a virtual conference dedicated to sales and marketing alignment. It's happening May 22nd through the 26th, and we wanted to do something special for B2B Growth listeners. Leading up to the event, we'll be giving you early access to some of the Aligned 17 sessions. Today's episode is exactly that. So if you like today's interview, head over to Aligned17.com and sign up to access every session of the event. We've got an incredible lineup of speakers, including Gary Vaynerchuk, Jill Conrath, Tony Hughes, Tucker Max, and Trish Bertuzzi, along with dozens of other B2B sales and marketing experts. So go to Aligned17.com and sign up today. You're listening to the B2B Growth Show a podcast dedicated to helping B2B executives achieve explosive growth. Whether you're looking for techniques and strategies or tools and resources, you've come to the right place. I'm James Carberry. And I'm Jonathan Green. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to Align 17. We are here today with Alan Gannett. He is the CEO at TrackMaven. Alan, how are you doing today, man? Great, man. How about you? I am wonderful. Alan, uh, I have had you on B2B Growth Show. We featured you in Content Summit. Every time we talk, uh, you are just a wealth of, of knowledge and insight. Really stoked to share what you have to say about sales and marketing today. We're going to be diving deep into that. But before we do, I'd love for you to explain what is TrackMaven all about? What are you and your team up to over there? Totally. So um, for any of you who've never heard of TrackMaven, we're a marketing analytics platform. So what that means really simply is we bring your marketing analytics data in from everywhere. So your CRM, marketing automation, you know, paid advertising, social media, and we give you one cohesive view of that. So you can build reports, dashboards. We allow you to go down to the individual piece of content level and see things like, okay, which piece of social media actually drove revenue for my business? You know, which piece of content marketing drove net new leads? So it's really about connecting that top of the funnel content to the bottom of the funnel. The company's about four years old. We work with a lot of big B2B brands and B2C brands, and we're based in the wonderful Washington, D.C., and I fell into this after I was a CMO of a B2B software company. I was disillusioned with how terrible analytics were, especially, you know, five years ago, and I'm glad to be here today. And you have an awesome, you're wearing a surf cap, and so you're clearly having, like, the better day. (laughs) So I'll have to try and see if I can keep up. Yeah, man. I figure if you're not comfortable, you're not winning at life. So, uh, exactly. so, so I've got to do it. So Alan, uh, there are a few questions that I, I'm really excited to dig into. This first one, being around, and as you've transitioned from being a CMO, now you're the CEO of a platform that is growing like wildfire. I've, I've, we've been connected on LinkedIn for a while, and I see the stuff you're posting. I love what you guys are doing and how fast you're growing. What has been the most challenging aspect for you as you're, as you're leading of the entire team when it comes to aligning your sales organization and your marketing organization in the context of track maven yeah so i think we made a sort of existential mistake early on which i think is a very common mistake which is that we really didn't think about product marketing as like a need to have function so when you're doing you know, your high growth startup we went from you know, zero to 50 employees in just a few years it's like you know, everything's urgent, everything's on fire. And so product marketing went under the line. And what we found is that in the beginning, when you first start, you have that initial product market fit, everyone knows it. But as you expand the business, and as your platform becomes more and more complex, those sort of natural ability to talk about it, to differentiate it, to provide the features and all of that sort of stuff actually becomes one of the most important things in your entire company's existence. Mm. But a lot of people wait a long time to really make product marketing a function. So when we did that about a year ago, that was a light bulb for us. You know, having someone focus on product marketing, you know, they then took over our marketing messaging, but also all the way into our sales enablement. And how do we translate these features and benefits into sales training, sales collateral, sales messaging? And that person's job was then to keep everyone aligned. Mm. And so now we had a sort of a, you know, a little radar system saying, wow, like, you know, hey, that's not working. Right or hey, we need to fix this. Or this messaging that we all love, on um, theory, is actually not working in practice. We have to change. We have to pivot. And before, it would just end up being this sort of like malaise of like, oh, the messaging is not really working. And so, I think the biggest mistake anyone can make is under investing in product marketing. That is, I think, number one. And then I think number two is, you know, we have all of revenue reporting to one person. And that's been a huge benefit to alignment because now everyone has the same boss, right? 
So sales and marketing both report to our president, and the result of that is that's all one cohesive team, right? And so you don't have those sort of like dynamics as much. And so I think some of this is also just an org chart thing, right? Who does marketing report into? I think these days you see more and more of an empowered marketing where there's a CMO reporting directly into the CEO, and I think that works well. But in that case, if you have sort of a separate head of sales and separate head of marketing, those two people have to be aligned at the hips. And whether that's a personality thing, a comp thing, right, they should be bonused on the same thing, you know, a maybe experience, you know, they come from a similar background, so they have, you know, maybe they worked in the same company, so they have a similar method and methodology. But I really think that there's a huge element of humanity in sales and marketing alignment that people tend to overlook with systems or sort of more functional fixes when, hey, if those two people you know don't like each other, like you're not going to get your sales and marketing aligned. And as we all sort of know, working in B2B marketing, a lot of heads of sales, a lot of heads of marketing do not get along. So if you're one of those organizations, that I think is the first problem to address. Got it. And so what would you say to the person, maybe the CEO? Oh my gosh, like you're right. Like we're, we're trying to force something that just from a human standpoint, these two humans just don't get along. And so to align both of their organizations isn't going to work. Is that just a really hard conversation that you have to have at that point and kind of pick one one or the other? Or like, how would you say yeah, to move I, from I think, there? I think people change, can change more than we think, right? So I think as a, as a leader, you have a duty to invest in people that are investing in your company and you. And uh, so I think it's really important that you have the hard conversation. The hard conversation isn't necessarily that, hey, one of you is fired. The hard conversation might be that this needs to change. And I need both of you fully invest in changing and figure out what's wrong. And if that means bringing in an outside facilitator, if that means you're doing group, you know, two-on-ones for a while, like whatever it takes, I think that is the hard conversation you have to have. And, you know, if that doesn't work, if the people you've hired aren't self-aware enough or can't evolve or can't change, that you need to let one of them or both of them go, like, that may be the hard conversation you end up at, but I think the hard conversation you start with is we really need to change this. Yeah, no, that, that makes perfect sense. Alan, something I'm, I'm really interested about is, so you have that hard conversation, maybe that works, and they start to become more self-aware, they start to work better together. What are some things you've implemented at TrackMaven so that that alignment is maintained on an ongoing basis? Yeah, so... One is, you know, having revenue goals for in marketing comp and marketing KPIs. So I think, you know, if your marketing team doesn't have a revenue goal, you know, I think you're kidding yourself because at the end of the day, no one cares if you generate leads if they're bad leads, right? Or no one cares if you generate marketing qualified leads if they're bad leads. And so I think you do want to have those sort of leading metrics so that people feel like their activities in the moment are tied to their goals and their compensation. But I think you also have that long-term component and I think this is one of the areas where you can most easily suss out, you know, if there's alignment. Because if you say to your marketing team, hey, half your bonus is going to be based on our quarterly sales goal. And they go, wait, 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 that can't be, right? We don't have control over that. That's when you know you have an alignment issue. Because your marketing team should be so confident that if they give your sales team a lead, they're going to do their best job closing it as possible. And if not, that's where there's an alignment issue, right? Because otherwise, like, if you're working together and you're all spending time under one roof, like you should really, really trust each other, right? Well, I think when we talk about alignment, what we really talk about often is trust, right? When you hear these marketing conversations and these sales conversations, we don't hear alignment. Really, it's trust. I don't trust that this lead is actually a good lead or I don't trust that the salesperson I'm going to give this to is actually working. So I think alignment is sort of like a nice way to say a lot of sales and marketing teams don't trust each other. And I think the sooner that we acknowledge that and start to deal with that, that's when I think you'll start to see real human and organizational change rather than just, oh, let's try to like have more meetings here or change this comp structure. I think when you really acknowledge that, hey, my company has a trust issue, that's when you can fix it. I was having a conversation earlier this week with someone and this idea of marketing being sales as customer came up and it came up as, you know, and the guy that I was talking to said, you know, that's, it's a very dated way of, of looking at it. And so in context of what you just said, like alignment really comes down to trust is that, I guess that I've been wrestling with this idea of like, okay, marketing is there to serve sales, but from your vantage point, And as we think through this idea of trust, is that something that 
is a dated way of looking at it, or should we be thinking about that in a different way? Yeah, so I think it's dated, and I think you know, I think the two ways to address are either have two you know equivalent you know people who are running sales, running marketing, and they have to trust each other, or you have one person who they both report into, and apparently that person's going to trust themselves, right? And they might have managers under them who don't trust each other, and that's but that's easier to work with if it's all one org. So yeah, I think I think at the end of the day, I do think that's dated because you know these days you see the data from corporate executive board, you know, fifty seven percent of B two B buying decisions are made before someone actually contacts you know, your lead form or your sales reps. And so, you know, the majority of your purchase decisions are now being made off reading reviews on G2 crowd and trust radius on talking to other customers on Googling on reading core answers about you, right? That's actually how the majority of buying decisions are made. And those are all, you know, either inbound marketing efforts directly. Those might be customer experience efforts. That might be referral and advocacy marketing. But those are all marketing activities. And so I think more and more what you're seeing is that marketing is leading. The other thing I think you're seeing is in a lot of companies, the advent of marketing first. So what I mean by that is think about Slack, right? Slack, you know, only built a sales team a few years in. Originally, it was all self-serve. It was all marketing oriented. They were closing you know, big deals of people just going and signing on. And so the way people were hearing about Slack it was all marketing. It was all, hey, this is a great product, so it was word of mouth. Or, hey, we saw one of your billboards, or, hey, we saw one of your ads, or, hey, we read the website and we thought this value prop was great. And so I think we're all starting to see more companies that are more marketing-oriented than ever before. And so I really do think the idea of you know, marketing as a sales, as a, um, as a service to sales is dated. Yeah, okay. That, that makes sense. Alan, to close it out today, if you had to boil down, you've given several pieces of advice that people should heed to uh, if they're trying to align sales and marketing. But if you had to boil it down and you had to choose one you know, lasting piece of advice that you would want to close this out with to help a leader really align their sales and marketing organization, what would that piece of advice be? Sure. So I think the, the biggest struggle that people have, and this is across you know, powerful CEOs, this is your friends, this is everyone. And the biggest struggle people have is conflict, right? People really struggle to have conflict. And I know what people might be thinking when they hear this, well, no, like my head of sales yells at me all the time, right? But that's not real constructive confrontation, right? That is anger. That is frustration. That is not true constructive conflict. I mean conflict in the most positive and beautiful of ways, which is like when you have good conflict with someone, when you can tell them, here's what I think you're wrong about, and I'm willing to tell you this because I trust you and I trust that we can resolve this, that's a wonderful thing. And so I think most people are scared of that because they don't really trust the people around them. Even if it's someone close like a friend, there's that little element that maybe it's because of insecurity or whatever that says, hey, if I actually open up about my fears, my worries, especially as they relate to this person, this person may no longer like me. They may no longer want to work with me, right? They may want to get me fired. So we all clench up when we have to have conflict. And so what I see with sales and marketing organizations, when the alignment gets bad, is because there actually isn't enough conflict. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but really if you go to you know, an organization, you see that, usually what you actually see is more like sales and marketing aren't talking about the real problems, right? They're all avoiding it. They're dancing. You know, they're dealing with stuff that's popping up on the surface. But underneath all of that, there's this lack of trust, which means they avoid each other. They avoid dealing with the true problems. So I think for any leader, I think the thing you want to really focus on in your organization is how do I bring openness, right? How do I bring constructive conflict? And you know, there are some really great books on this, right? Five Dysfunctions of a Team is a wonderful sort of analysis of this. He also, the same author, has a book called The Advantage. There's another book called The Speed of Trust. Like These are all really great sort of essential business reading books. But I think if you can still a sense of trust in your organization, all of these alignment issues, you know, you know, we talk about them in such a sort of like a sterile way, all these alignment issues will go away. So that would be my lasting you know, piece of advice for everyone. I love it. I love it. Alan, as always, this has been fantastic. If somebody watching this wants to stay connected with you or they want to learn more about Track Maven, what's the best way for them to go about doing that? Totally. So for TrackMaven, it's trackmaven.com or trackmaven on any social platform. We welcome you. Hopefully you follow us. And then for me personally, you know, follow me on Twitter. It's at Alan. And um, yeah, looking forward to hopefully hearing from some of you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alan. To ensure that you never miss an episode of the B2B Growth Show, subscribe to the show in iTunes or your favorite podcast player. 
This guarantees that every episode will get delivered directly to your device. If you'd like to connect with B2B executives from all over the world, make sure to join our private Facebook community. There are some incredible conversations happening inside this group. To join, visit b2bgrowthshow.com slash FB. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.